Has there ever been an addiction to something you experienced in your life that you were able to successfully quit? And this doesn't even have to refer to drugs. It can be an addiction to... It could be whatever. Has there been, and if, if you're willing to share, of course, has there been an addiction to something you experienced in your life that you were able to successfully quit? Not something you're currently facing, something that you've been able to overcome in your life. Um, I was popping pills. I was popping perks, Percocets and ecstasy pills, like with me dealing with a lot of trauma and things of that nature. And, uh, yeah, I quit. Like, I don't do it at all. Was it an actual addiction? Mm hmm Like, when I was out, like, especially with me grieving and going through a lot of stuff, like, family, personal issues and things of that nature, like, I was, especially, like, when I lost my grandmother and my auntie, I was getting drunk, like, drunk every every day and I was popping pills like nobody really knew like you only knew if I tell you like because everybody was thinking it was the alcohol it was causing me to act out and things of that nature and it was like taking control over my man too like you know I quit like you know and like I don't really speak on it but I'm comfortable with speaking on it like I told you in uh earlier in when we first was speaking on my open book, I probably could save someone. Like, and it's like, I was doing it to try to numb my pain. And it's like, when I sobered up, I see you had to face that same trauma, like, you know? And I, a lot of people who I know, well, not a lot of people, but I know a few people who passed away from drugs, pills, things of that nature, and it scared me too. But I been here, stopped before then, but I was still doing perks before then, because it was like, perks was like kind of putting me in a state of when I do when I eat edibles and things of that nature, and it was like, I it hit me numb. Like, I was so high, I felt numb. Let's dissect this a little bit further. Which of the drugs that you had an addiction to that you quit was the hardest one for you to quit? The perks. How long has it been since you last touched one? Rough mm. estimate. Mm. Probably the last time I did one was probably... Rough estimate. Six months ago, five months ago, but be, and that was only one time six months ago. And before then, it was like a year. When you did do it that one time, in the midst of that you just described, would that be considered a relapse at all? No, I did it because I wanted to, and I had another one, and I didn't do it. I threw it away. I just wanted to feel numb. Like, it's a difference from you having an addiction and you can't function without it, and you having an addiction to make you feel a certain type of way. Either way I go, addiction is an addiction. Like, I really was only doing it because I didn't want to feel nothing. Like, I was numb. How long do you think you were addicted to it when you were? Well, the ecstasy, I was doing that for some years, but the Percocets, I was doing that for probably a year and a half or two. Reflecting back, what do you think your scariest moment was when you used Percocet, if you had a scary moment? I never had a scary Because I, like, with me... My tolerance with anything is low besides liquor. <laughs> so I'd probably do a half of one or depending on like if it was a 
Yeah, it depends on the, how strong it is. I do a half one and then do another half. I never popped the whole perk before. I think I did. Yes, I did. I did a 30 one time. That's when I was probably tripping. I had to sit down. <laughs> yeah, but, like, my tolerance with drugs is really low, so that ain't for me. Was there a bottom point for you? during that addiction to Percocet at all? You said was there at what point? A bottom point. Was there like an ultimate low for you during that addiction? Mm, someone I know passed away from a fake one. It scared me. Were the Percocets that you indulged in during that addiction authentic? Mm -hmm. For one, like I don't get drugs from anybody. I don't, I don't even accept liquor from people. So, in your experience, do you think you've ever digested a fake Percocet? No. You may have stated it already, and if you did, I apologize, but what was your reason for quitting, ultimately, Percocet, specifically? Mm. I, I quit for the same reason why I stopped doing ecstasy. I, like, you still got to face your problems. You still got to figure out how to move forward when you sober up. So it's like, why keep doing it when you could try to get help to try to fix your trauma and your pain, like, you know? Because, like, doing drugs, like, you know how growing up or how people say, oh, crackheads doing the Percocet, that's like, you, you know, that's a crackhead shit. It's just a pill. I'm not trying to be a young crackhead. Or nah. I'm not trying to be addicted to drugs. Like, cause all of the drugs what my generation doing, you might as well say they doing fentanyl shit. The lean. All of that nine, like, how you laughing at people who out here doing dope or crack or whatever, but you doing the same thing and you got the same side effects. Like, you you just you the same as them, right? How were you able to quit Percocet? What's the secret? It's a mind control thing. Don't nothing have no power over me to make me be like, oh, I can't function without this. Or that it's a mind control thing. Like, was it the flip of a light switch when you finally did quit, or was it a progression over time for you? I did it on my own. I stopped. I just was, I started paying attention to my actions. I started paying attention to people around me. I started paying attention to people around me who was doing it as well. Like. And I just was like, no, I don't want to. I always, you know, I make decisions on my own. Like, I'm not a follower, I'm a leader. And there's, like, a lot of artists who do drugs or um, who um, who have done drugs, they could save lives or stop others, you know, from doing things. Like, because at first I didn't even want to speak on it, but I'm not ashamed of nothing I went through in life, so I could speak on it. I'm not perfect, no one is. So when you did quit, was it instantly or it took some time for you to quit? It was instant. I just told you it was a man control thing. Did you have any withdrawals after you finally quit? A few times, yeah. Back was itching. <laughs> Back was itching, sweating. Had just you... like crackhead having withdrawals. No disrespect to them, but I don't know what else to say. Had drug you, addict, drug addict. How'd you cope with that as far as the withdrawals description that you just uh, mentioned when it did happen? I just dealt with it and I kept pushing forward. How long do you think that period lasted for, the withdrawals? Probably a day or two, on and off, like not all day. Cause it's like I wasn't addicted heavy. My addiction was low, like, you know. Plus, I never, I wasn't really doing whole Percocet, so. Did you have any kind of support system while you were quitting? No, because nobody didn't know. 
What have you noticed health-wise, mentally, or physically since you quit Perks? If anything. Health-wise, like mentally, it's been changing. But like everything else, it's the same. When you were addicted to Percocet, were you creating music under the influence of that at all? Mm -hmm. Get real creative, but I'm really creative off the edibles. When it comes to Percocet, have you noticed any difference music-wise since you quit? Yeah, I found my sound again. <laughs> Cause I was all over the place. What's been your biggest song so far in your music collection? Pop Out. <laughs> Pop out, even though I have songs bigger than that, but that's my biggest song. It just went viral yesterday with some girls fighting on Facebook. Was they that? They pulled up and met each other playing the song in, pulled out from the fight, playing it over. <laughs> and it was like over, over, over 5,000 people shared and then over 100,000 views. Said, damn, pop out the next neck if you bug, huh? <laughs> Was that song Pop Out created or recorded under the influence of Percocet? No, I wasn't even doing none of that then. I was only drinking liquor, smoking weed. Again, you may have answered this already, but uh, just in case you didn't, quitting Percocet. Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> Queen, you what? What did that teach you? What did you learn from that? That whole experience there? Shit. Everybody ain't as strong as me, you know? A lot of people run to drugs and a lot of other things when they feel like they don't got nobody or they feel like that's the only way they can cope with it. And it's like I felt like even when you sober up, you got to deal with it. And that's a, that's a part of life. Like, I'm still dealing with it now. So, you know. Winding down questions here. Circumstances could be different for everyone. But generally speaking, let's say somebody's watching this interview and they're trying to quit Percocet themselves. Anything you would say to them? You can do it. If you got to go to rehab, go to rehab. Like, if whatever you got to do to stop, Stop while you're ahead. Like seriously, cause you could change you could save someone else's life. Like you could save someone else from an addiction. You can inspire others to push forward and have some strength to keep going. Stop while you're ahead if you can. If you can't get help. If you're gonna reach out to me, reach out to me. Like I don't judge people. I don't tell people business or none of that. Like if you wanna call words of encouragement or anything or just for an ear to listen to, you can reach out to me. I respond to DMs. And what platform for your DMs? Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I respond to everything but nudes. Don't send me no nudes. I will block you. When it comes to these platforms... Facebook, plat I'll let my baby. No, go ahead. I want you to All get it platforms, on. you can inbox me. I respond. Now, there may be somebody watching this interview that's getting to know you for the very first time. Mm -hmm. Care to share your screen name on all of these different platforms you just mentioned? Um, Instagram and Twitter, KatieGatBANDZ. Snapchat, KatieGatBANDZ22. Facebook, Katie Blanco. I have Clubhouse, um, KatieGatBands039 or 39. And I have TikTok, Katie got B A N D Z three nine. Only fans? No. You're gonna see me doing a Dougie in that bitch. <laughs> Why no OnlyFans for you? What? Why no OnlyFans for me? Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not about to go on there and um show my body out for two dollars or donations. I might as well go strip, right? 
Not that I'm knocking anyone hustle. I don't knock no one hustle. But if I do OnlyFans, they not going to see what they think they going to see. So, And then they're going to say I'm scamming them. I'm not into that. I'm sorry. Like, Well, I'm not sorry, but that ain't for me. Like, but whoever got OnlyFans, salute you. But mm, that ain't my cup of tea. Uh, any thought to a non-sexual OnlyFans profile? I do one of those. There are some people on OnlyFans that are non-sexual. Yeah, but I, it's just the thought of having OnlyFans. People going to come on there thinking what they're going to see. So I got too much stuff to do. I barely could keep up with all of these platforms anyway. So, like, they want to donate to me, just send it to me. When it comes to Percocet, Oh, Lord. <laughs> wrapping up here. Wrapping up, okay? Did it begin recreationally for you, or uh, was it medical when the addiction first started? Recreational. And the reason that's being asked is because sometimes people actually get a medical prescription wow. for it and... And addiction can build in that manner. Yeah, I know. Um, cause they, they, they. I was gonna get prescribed some Xanax because I have a problem with going to sleep. But it's like that's an addiction too. I don't want to be, I don't want to be addicted to none of that. It's a mind control thing, and I know it's like with me getting away from depression and me trying to focus on my career. It's like it be a lot, and it's like a lot of trauma be going through my head. It's like it be a lot. So like. I can control me. I got this. Last question in regards to this subject matter. Anything else you want to say you didn't get a chance to in regards to this Percocet addiction? Anything I didn't ask people want to know about it? Anything that you failed to mention you'd want to mention now about it? Other than what you've already said. And if you said everything, that's okay too. I said everything. I already said how it made me feel, what it made me think, what it made me do. It hit me numb. Like, I, I tuned everything out, what I was facing and dealing with. And it was like, when you sober up, you still got to face it, but then you look up, you're doing it again and again and again. That's how it become an addiction. So it's like I've been, I went to get help to try to, you know, I'm dealing with how to face my problems and, you know, what to do and how to move forward with everything. When it came to Percocet, was that something that, um, that addiction, that was an instant, it took time to become an addiction for you? It was on me. I ain't, it ain't no such thing as it, it took time or this or that. Whenever I wanted to do it, I did it. Whenever I wanted more, I did more. Like, it was on me. Nobody forced me to do nothing or none of that. Nobody around me barely even knew when I was doing whatever I was doing. And for time reference, it's February 22. 20. <laughs> yeah, DC4 dropping February 20th on all platforms, but exclusively on live mixtapes. New videos coming soon, new tour dates coming soon. Be on the lookout.